Well, hello, I'm Josh, and welcome to my shop. Today, we're going to try an experiment. Uh, what I have here is a Victorian Ox Alox Farmer, uh, which is a uh, basically a pioneer that they added a saw blade to. And I like this knife, um, but I don't carry it much because I just I have some other ones that I like more. Um, so I am cons I'm going to take a look at taking out this can opener and replacing it with the blade from this flex cut, uh, I believe they call this a roughing knife. Um, the th thickness of the can opener is um, 2.16 millimeters, which maybe is supposed to be exactly 2 millimeters. I'm not sure, but whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter much. So, uh, but the thickness of the flex cut blade is only 1.22 millimeters, which is probably okay because what what will end up happening is I'm going to try to sneak the flex cut blade uh, over to the side, uh, if you can kind of see that, uh, so that it doesn't run into the um, the other opener here, the bottle opener Phillips, so that because it will overlap some. So we're going to try to sneak it over and put it over to the side a little bit so that it, the tip can go down and not run into that guy. Um, to do that, I'll need a spacer, and I actually have some old uh, Swiss Army knives that I have taken apart for other modifications I've done, and I might be able to use this spacer over here. Um, I may have to reshape it a little bit, um, but it's almost exactly the right amount of thickness. It's almost exactly one millimeter, which the difference between the thickness of this blade and the opener is um, 0.9 millimeters, so it, it's darn close. I might have to thin it down a little bit. Uh, the steps are going to be kind of intricate. I'll have to drill out uh, this rivet and then get the blade out of this knife and reshape the, um, the blade so that it has the correct shape to it so that it will not only stay open but also stay closed uh, like if I put it in my pocket. So hopefully I can use the opener as the template for that blade and I'll be able to shape it with some files and I don't know a Dremel or whatever else I might need. I got a, most of those things that I should need. Um, and then I will have to put a new rivet in and peen it so that it stays closed. The These rivets are that silver, I forget what they're made out of, but um, I don't have that material. I have a brass uh, rod which is of course slightly oversized. These um, pins are three millimeters thick, I believe, and this brass rod is an eighth inch, so it's like three point something. Uh, so I'll just have to probably put it in a drill and sand it down a little bit uh, to get it down to three millimeters, which, I don't know, I think will be accurate enough. Hopefully it's also strong enough. Worst case scenario, I suppose I'll just have to replace it after a while if it gets worn out. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Here we go. So I should mention that uh, the whole reason for doing this is to make a kind of pocket carving knife. I like to do some woodworking and uh, carving and uh, it's always nice to have a pocket knife in your pocket uh, that's capable of doing some decent carving and um, you might say well why not buy one of the models of the Alox that has another smaller blade for carving such as like there's um, the uh, the electrician has a, a blade here um, that is smaller and also the um, well, they call it the Swiss Army 7 now, uh, formerly known as the Harvester, that has a pruning blade that's kind of a hawk's bill, peaked blade, which could be reshaped, um, which I could do that, and that might work just fine. Um, but I have this knife. I don't use it a lot, so my expense is um, not much there. And um, the hardness on Victorian Ox knives is the steel uh, is not as high as a typical carving knife. These are about 58 to 60 on the Rockwell scale from FlexCut, and uh, these guys I can't quite remember, but I think they're more about 56 or so on the blades. So they're not as hard, and if you get to into some harder woods like cherry, oak, whatnot, um, the blades kind of tend to roll over on me. So uh, this will be interesting. Now that I have the uh, blade safely masked off, we have to find some way of getting that baby out of the handle. I'm not exactly sure what the tang looks like on these guys, you know, the part that's inside the handle. So uh, I'm not going to use my favorite uh, knife to kind of whittle away at the wood here. Uh, this is a, this is a, I don't know, a bench knife that I made out of a, a sawzall blade a while ago, so I'm not overly attached to it. It's not 
don't have much expense involved. So if I nick the metal or something, I, I don't really mind. So anyway, here we go. Now that we know about where the tang is, I'm not sure how much farther it goes back, but I think we're going to try a little controlled split and take this out to the chopping blocks with a hatchet and see if we can get it to, to follow this grain line and split off so I don't have to carve as much. I know All right, there you can see we've whittled it down even further. The blade side is over here. This is the blade side. Um, so we're getting close. Um, a pretty a pretty serious amount of epoxy in there. I hope that the steel goes back all the way to here. I uh, haven't quite figured out if it does yet. We'll see. So if you've ever wondered what the inside of a flex cut knife looks like, uh, when you take the handle off, there you go. So there's the flex cut blade with the uh, handle and re epoxy removed. Uh, you can see at least most of the epoxy. There's a hole here, probably to keep it from sliding. And um, that is not much metal to work with. Hopefully I can uh, find some way to make that useful. All right, I guess it's time to uh, see if we can get this guy out of here uh, so we can replace it with the blade. Um, the steps are going to be to center punch the pin, probably on this side because it's the less attractive side in my opinion, in case I mess up and uh, then drill uh, a ways in to release all the pressure on this here peening business and then hopefully drive the pin out. Uh, I'm gonna start with a uh, 5 64th cobalt drill bit. Hopefully that is enough and that it is big enough. Otherwise we'll have to step up a notch. But I don't want to risk going through the side and hitting the aluminum with too big of a bit because um, these scales are made from aluminum. I don't really have to worry too much about drilling through the hardened steel of the um, knives and whatnot. They'll probably be hard enough to just deflect the blade back into the uh, pin, but uh, I definitely don't want to hit the aluminum, so we have to be careful of that. The pickle is making sure you get as absolutely dead center as possible. There's probably a better way of doing this. I'm sure there's a tool that'll find dead middle, but I don't got one, so we're going to use the old school eyeball method here. And that looks pretty much like it's in the middle. Once you get that, give it a nice whack with your, oh, wait a minute, make sure you got the right side. Yep, that's the side we want. I'd hate to drill out the wrong side. Anyway, try again, back to finding middle. And that looks pretty good. Give it a good tap. Maybe one more for good measure. There you go. And you can see we have a little dimple there that we can then use to get our drill bit started. Over to the drill press. Alright, so I've moved the knife so that now that the uh, pin that I want to drive out is sitting over a dog hole so that there is relief for the pin to go through. And I have a nail, uh, which is almost exactly the size of the hole that I punched, but a little bit smaller so that the pin can kind of push in, hopefully, as we drive it out. Now I uh, see if we can get it to come out. Alright, we're going to have to step up the size of the drill hole a little bit. We're taking it up to 3 seconds of an inch. We'll uh, drill out the pin a little bit more hopefully that'll let her loose. Alright I think the slightly bigger hole is gonna solve all our issues here. 
We're now sitting over a dog hole so that we can hopefully just drive the pin straight out. All right, so we've cleaned up the flex cut blade a little bit so it's a little shiny and we can kind of see some marks on there. I used the can opener as a template, um, set it on there, trying to get as close to the hole at the back as I can get, and then doing my best to make sure that this back edge, sorry, that shadow there, uh, this back edge right here is parallel to the blade of the flex cut knife because when when I have the knife um, all together and open I want the blade to be parallel to the handle and so um, that line right there would have to be parallel to the blade in order for it to, to all line up um, which I'm not sure what that's going to mean for when the blade is closed. I may have to get creative with um, the opening because it may not leave enough metal to make it stick up much. Um, we'll kind of have to see as we go along here. Um, and then for marking the center, I, um, I, I colored it in with a Sharpie uh, where I wanted it to be. And then I took this guy off and I used a center punch to mark my center or at least as close as I could get by eye. And then I will drill it out with, um, I'm gonna use one of these Irwin, um, these are actually uh, drill bits that are used for taps. They're kind of um, not real standard sizes, but if you can look here, this is actually 3.05 millimeters, which if the pin is three millimeters, uh, this will give just a little clearance to pivot around. And it seems to be, so here's the actual drill bit, um, pretty good fit in the, um, can opener so I'm gonna go with that um, I don't think it's absolutely critical that it be uh, perfectly sized just that it not be too small so what I'll do is I'll drill the hole and then I will use a pin or something and line these up again and make sure that uh, my markings around the outside uh, line up with where that hole is because I, I may not have gotten perfectly center or, or something of that nature. So uh, next step is to take this over to the drill press and drill that out. We have our three millimeter hole there and um, when you drill these out they have Kind of sharp edges to them, obviously, you know, little burrs and whatnot. Um, so I, I like to try to remove those burrs. Um, this is just a countersink bit that I don't really uh, worry too much about. So we're going to use it in a little hand drill to just kind of spin those edges a little bit and uh, hopefully take those burrs off. So the next thing I'm going to do, there's still a little bit of an edge uh, on that hole, that smaller hole there that we're going to be using for the pivot. And um, since it's going on a brass pivot, and this is, you know, obviously a hardened steel of some variety, um, we got to make sure it's pretty smooth and rounded over. Otherwise, we're just going to cut into that and make it hard to open and potentially wear out the pin. So um, I have a Dremel tool or, you know, a rotary tool with a, a little, I don't know, grinding bit of some variety there um, that will round over those holes a little bit. I'll spare you the, the watching me do it, but um, I'll just touch that to it real quick while it's spinning good and fast, and hopefully kind of take those edges down a little bit. And then I think we'll be good to go. All right, so here's the hole after running the Dremel on it for just a second. It's good and smooth now. I'm not too worried about it um, hurting the pin at all. So next up, we have to shape the guy. So I have... Uh, taken the drill bit that I used to drill the hole, that Irwin number 31 for taps, um, and put it in the vise upside down so that I got a pin here to set the, the, bit, the uh, blade on. So we put that on there. And now, 
take the can opener that we're using for our template, slide it on there, and now we know that our um, we're perfectly lined up with that hole so that any marks that we make uh, should be pretty darn close to what that can opener was. So the only thing we have to do is again we have to make sure that we perfectly line up this line right here with the blade because that's what's going to determine the angle that the blade sits at when it's open. So we're obviously eyeballing here, but we're going to try to get as close as possible. There's that line. I'm sure that I could probably take measurements, but I'm not usually that precise. I think. That's going to do it. So, using the Sharpie here, I'm just going to color in around the outside, which All right, so for the initial shaping of this, uh, I think I'm going to use my Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel. Uh, it's a little more precise than using my big angle grinder. So, I'll put on my mask and get to cutting here. All right, time for an initial test. So. so that's just my um, punch, or uh, uh, an awl. And it seems to absolutely disappear when it goes in there. That's going to be a pickle. All right, so with a little bit of finessing, I think we got this guy where it needs to be. Um, if you remember, the the blade was closing down in there too far, so I wouldn't be able to grab it when it sat at rest. Um, what I did is I made a flat spot here uh, as opposed to here, because it was actually going all the way and closing, um, and the spring was resting on here. Well, I should have thought about that, and all I had to do was move the flat spot back a little bit, and now it rests in a little bit higher position. And I'll show you. Put this in here. Again, I'm just using my... Uh, scratcher that scratch all there to um, kind of act as a pin uh, temporarily so so the blade rests right there which hopefully I can get a little uh, nail groove in the top of the blade so that I can get it pinched and get it at least most of the way open before I can open it all the way it rests open right there so here's the spacer uh, which is a spacer out of another uh, Swiss Army knife actually from a 91 millimeter knife um, that I took apart for something else and uh, all I did is rounded off this bottom edge a little bit so that it wouldn't sit stick out once it's in there so to assemble all I gotta do is slide the spacer in there set the blade in next to him and then I will just try to line the holes up here which is a little easier said than done there we go and you can see the spacer sits in there doesn't stick out from the side. It's not perfect. Uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't line up like the other spacers does um, perfectly with the outside of the um, Alloc scales in the liners, but it's good enough for me. So I'm gonna go with it. All right. So the next thing to do is to thin down uh, this brass rod uh, that I'm gonna use for the pin. Uh, the pins in the alloxes on the end are three millimeters, and this is an eighth inch brass rod, so it's a little bit over three millimeters. Um, so I'm just gonna spit. I got her checked up in my drill press here, and I'm just gonna take some, um, well, probably like 220 grit sandpaper, and just really lightly um, try to remove just a little bit of brass um, and get it down just a slight bit under three millimeters, hopefully uh, consistently across the length. So put my mask on and here we go. So 
So there you can see it's actually just under, uh, well you can't see that it's under three millimeters, but it is under three millimeters. I just measured it with my uh, digital calipers there and uh, it looked like the thing that worked the best there was I had a file that I just used on there and I braced it on the other side with my hand and slowly moved the file back and forth up and down. Uh, that took off a pretty good consistent amount of metal and then I moved up through a couple of grits of sandpaper just to smooth it down and then used my uh, the edge of my leather strap uh, just to give it a little bit of a polish and it's very smooth to the feel. I know you can still see some uh, marks in it but I'm not too worried about that. I just want it to be smooth enough that I don't have to worry about um, um, snags or anything as I'm putting it in. Alright so now we're going to uh, open up a little space in the knife here uh, for the blade to sit and ride alongside the, uh, the opener there. So we're going to use the grinder, uh, my grinder here, and just flatten out this curve, uh, this angle right here a little bit. Um, shouldn't take too much, and uh, I got a little cup of water here for when, uh, just to d dunk it every now and then to keep it from overheating. So here we go. Next on the list is the nail nick uh, for pulling up the blade, and so I have um, kind of temporary assembly here, and I'm just going to use a sharpie to mark about where I think that should be um, with um, the opener layer there. You want to try to get your nail nick as close to the tip of the blade as possible uh, so you get the best leverage there. So don't want to run out of metal, but I think we want her to be about right here. Alright, so I got a mark there that I can see. And then to make the nail nick, I use one of these um, grinding um, attachments, or bits, I guess you call them, for the Dremel. Uh, it's a barrel with a flat top that makes a nice little um, spot for you to get your nail in there. And you can see where my line is there. For my nail nick and I'll vise it up and grind it out. All right, nail nick grinding. Uh, be very careful. You have a, I have a pointy blade strapped in the vise there, and uh, well, helps when you plug the Dremel tool in. Anyway, be careful of that pointy blade. You don't want to stab yourself on. <laughs> So I have taken all of the components that we're working with here, and I've polished them up a bit with the strop and everything. Um, so they look really nice and shiny. And I think we're ready to assemble. So um, I think the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to get everything started and then use this guy uh, to get everything lined up and then come in from the other side and push the actual pin in because uh, this little point kind of helps get all the holes lined up rather than trying to push this guy in straight away which is kind of tricky so uh, the toughest one to line up is of course the one I just made so we'll get that in there hopefully that's pretty good and then the saw Good. Now the big blade. And I believe there we go. Everything's in place. Looks like it should to me. Oh, I should also show you I polished up the opener. You can still see a couple of the marks on it, but not too bad. Had to modify the shape of it a good bit uh, to make sure there was enough clearance for it to close. And for this one to be able to easily open and not run into it, as you can see. So let's try to push this brass pin so that it is in there and we don't hopefully lose 
where everything's at. So here we go. Well, that fell right out. That looks pretty lined up. Okay, we're gonna give it a little love tap. Progress is being made. Yep. All right, let's keep going. We're gonna put her over a dog hole here. Whoops. And pat it with a little bit of leather so we don't mess up that nice pretty set. So here we go. And we're through. All right, let's check everything opens and closes. That works. Saw. Works. Big blade. Works. All right, now, time to trim and peen. All right, so time to trim the pin and then uh, file them flat and then peen. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna work on um, the not shield side of the knife because if I mess up, which is always possible, uh, it'll probably be on my first shot. So I will um, hopefully booger that side instead of the uh, side that's a little prettier. So first thing, I've done this before. Um, but never on an Alox. I've always done it on regular Swiss Army knives that have the scales to cover up anything you do wrong. So, um, first thing to do is to trim the brass rod, and so I just have a pair of side cutters, at least that's what I call them, um, down a good bit. And I want to leave maybe an eighth inch or a little more of the brass, because you then want to file down to a more finished length. Be careful when you cut with side cutters because what you're cutting could go flying. So next, to file that guy down a little bit so that it's good and flat, I just have a regular old flat file and I am going to file the top. And in case I get a little wily, I have made myself a little protector. It's just a piece of uh, junk mail that I punched a hole in that I'm going to place over my pin. Uh, and protect my scales because sometimes I get weird with my files. <laughs> so I have filed that side of the pin down to oh just under a sixteenth of an inch um, and you can see the top is pretty good and flat. Now I am ready to peen this side. Um, to do that, I need to somehow ensure that the pin is not going down as I'm doing it. So my plan is to scooch this over, have the knife resting on the scrap wood, and then have the pin on the other side be just long enough that it is resting against the anvil surface, which I have already done. So I cut that pin. There's more than enough there uh, when it comes time to trim it down and file the other side. Um, so that that pin isn't then pushing through the knife. Instead, it's hitting the anvil head as I peen um, so that this side gets rounded off. There's other ways you could do that. You, you could set it in a vise um, and have the vise hold the pin while you're doing it um, with the knife laying flush across the top of the vise surface. Um, I didn't want to do that again because I was trying to do my best to preserve these scales. So this is the approach I've come up with. Um, so I'm going to peen this side over. Again, I'm going to actually continue to use my little protector there as I do the peening. And I think I'm gonna start out with uh, this ball peen hammer. It's uh, it's an old plum that I picked up at a thrift shop somewhere. Um, it's probably a three or four ounce head. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, for comparison's sake, here is a 12 ounce uh, ball peen and it is considerably heavier. Um, probably three or four times heavier, so that's why I'm guessing three to four ounce. Uh, the reason I'm using this one is because it'll go a little slower and be a little more precise, I'm hoping, um, as opposed to the bigger hammer, which if I was peening um, a piece that I wasn't worried about marring the surface, I would go with that guy because it goes a lot quicker. But anyway, so we're going to start peening. When peening, you want to go around the outer edge 
of the pin in a kind of a circular motion. You don't really want to hit the top square on. And uh, so here we go. a little long on the other side so we're going to trim a little off and also I think I left maybe a little too much uh, brass on the top side so hopefully it'll push down a little bit and take up some of that space we'll have to adjust a little bit on the other side on how much we leave so anyway trimming off that bottom a little bit there we go and adjusting there we go projector back in place So, no damage to the scale. Top's getting rolled over pretty well. Nice mushroom shape. Uh, the only thing you gotta be careful of is you don't wanna pinch the protector um, between the pin and the scale. So you just gotta make sure you kinda check where that's at occasionally. Um, but it's definitely helping because I probably would have marred that surface at least once. Let's see if I can get that to seep a little farther down here. There we go. Definitely won't need to leave as much metal on the other side when we get there. Perfect. All right, now it's time to peen the other side. So we have to trim again to length with some type of cutter. So here we go. Remember to watch out for your eyes, because these babies tend to fly. There we go. Now we have to file that top flat with a file. Once again, I will employ a little bit of a guard to protect the show surface of that alloc scale there, and file it flat. Now that the pin has been cut and filed flat, I have left, uh, well, I discovered on the other side that a 32nd of an inch ended up being a little much, and because I was on the first side, I could just drive the pin farther in, um, and that worked just fine. But this side, I don't have the ability to take up uh, too much of that extra, so we went down to about a 32nd of an inch of the pin sticking up, which, if you're a metric person, which I usually am actually, is about one millimeter. Uh, sticking up at the top there. Now we're going to start peening. To protect the scales as I peen, I have another piece of junk mail sitting there and then I have masked up the top end of the scale so that I can kind of set that down on top of the anvil. The pin hopefully will kind of contact the anvil as I peen, um, but the scales should be protected on both sides. Again, I'll be using um, my three or four ounce ball peen and a protector to protect my scales, which I made another one somewhere because that one's getting a little beat up. There we go. So, time to start peening. All right, so here is the finished product of what I have decided to call the whittling farmer. I removed the can opener and replaced it with the blade from a flex cut roughing knife. So took this guy out, put this guy in. Now I have a great knife, pocket carry, that can do some good whittling.